Hello and welcome to another Morelli webinar. Uh, today's topic is going to be alternator excitation. I'm the host for today's webinar. My name is Joshua Lee. I'm an application engineer based out of Morelli USA here in Atlanta, Georgia. So today's main agenda is we're going to talk about some alternator excitation principles. And that's going to include the exciter stator, the exciter rotor, and we're going to cover PMG excitation. Uh, if you are attending live, we have a Q&A open in the chat window where two application engineers will be answering any questions that you may have. If we're not able to get to your question during the live event, we'll be sure to follow up with any emails. So let's cover the main duties of the excitation system. So the excitation system works in conjunction with the AVR to stabilize the output of the alternator. It provides a variable DC current for short time overload capability and controls the terminal voltage with suitable accuracy. Uh, this helps to ensure a fast transient response with minimal voltage drop and helps ensure stable operation when connected to the grid or in parallel with other generators. Uh, for more information on our AVR systems, please refer to one of our previous webinars that we cover, uh, Morelli AVRs. So, excitation principles. The main principles of the excitation system are going to be the main stator, the main rotor, exciter stator, and the exciter rotor. So, what we're going to do is we're going to cover how the exciter rotor provides power to the main rotor which is what creates the magnetic field that produces the power for the alternator. So if we look at the exciter stator, it's going to be wound uh, with north and south poles. And that just depends on whether the windings in the poles are gonna be clockwise or counterclockwise. The ABR feeds DC current through these uh, copper coils and it's going to produce the magnetic fields that you're seeing here. And inside of this exciter stator, we're going to have attached to the main shaft spinning the exciter rotor. The exciter rotor is wound with uh, three sets of coils. And inside these coils, when it spins in this magnetic field, a current is induced, which is going to produce a three phase current. So if we look at the exciter rotor, Inside of the exciter rotor, we're going to find the rotating rectifier assembly. Now, the rotating rectifier assembly is composed of just a few parts, uh, the anode plate and the cathode plate. On these plates, you're going to find negatively or positively biased diodes. Uh, these diodes are going to take either the top or the bottom half of the AC sine wave, depending on which way they're oriented. So the three phase current is put into the input terminals and then it's going to be pushed through these diodes into the output. If we look at how the rectifier operates, we're going to have a sine wave going in to the rectifier, but coming out, we're only gonna take the top and bottom half of the wave and it's going to be inverted. So once we have all three phases of our current going in, we're going to get a very stable DC output from the rectifier into the main rotor how this really works to create the magnetic field is the rotating rectifier is going to inject that dc current into the main rotor and then the main rotor is wound very similar to the exciter stator where you have uh, sets of clockwise or counterclockwise windings which create a north or a south pole what we are looking at here is an example of a four pole uh, main rotor which is what our standard uh, stock generators that we keep are where we're gonna have North Pole, South Pole, and this is on the main rotor. So the main rotor then will rotate inside of the main stator. The main stator is also made up of a few sets of windings. And as this magnetic field rotates inside the stator, it's going to induce the current into the windings of the stator, which is where you're gonna get your output from your output. So how the excitation system really works. Here we have an example of an auxiliary wound uh, excitation system. So here you can see the ABR is going to sense the voltage that's coming out of the main road, the main stator, 
and then it's going to adjust how it powers the ex exciter state. So the AVR here is getting its power from an auxiliary winding, which is just a separate uh, coil wound inside the stator. And then it's going to use the power from that to excite the exciter stator. As this excitation adjusts, we're going to increase or decrease the magnetic field created by inside the uh, main rotor. And this field is going to adjust the power output of the alternator. So if we look here, we're going to look at the AC and DC current and how they kind of flow through this system. The AVR puts DC current into the exciter stator. It induces three phase AC current in the exciter rotor, which is then rectified to DC current to power the main rotor. And that DC current is what's going to induce uh, the current in the main stator. Another type of excitation we're going to be looking at is PMG excitation system. So a PMG excitation system is when you install a small permanent magnet generator onto the non-drive end of the shaft. Uh, this PMG produces a three-phase AC voltage anywhere between 170 and 220 volts, depending on which one you get. And it's going to feed the AVR independent of the rest of the system. And it's going to feed the AVR three-phase power. So why would we use a PMG? A PMG is used when a system has high inductive loads that cause large drops in the stator voltage. Uh, this makes the AVR suffer because its input voltage is reduced. So the PMG system in this scenario provides an independent power source, which is immune to these distorting loads. Uh, it helps to sustain short circuit currents up to, two up to three times the rated current. And during motor starting, uh, the excitation field does not collapse due to the lack of AVR supply, so it helps you start larger motors. Uh, it's also better for use with nonlinear loads, such as VFDs. Look here at uh, an example of starting a motor with an alternator. Here we have a 700 kVA load, and we're going to look at the difference in the AVR with an auxiliary winding versus a PMG with a digital AVR, which is our MEC-20. So if we try to start this 700 kVA load with just an auxiliary wound system, we're going to experience a 19% voltage dip. But if we add the PMG with the digital AVR, we're only going to see a 14% voltage dip. For a little bit more information on what you're looking at here, please refer to one of our previous webinars on data sheets. So, for example, of a uh, PMG that we use, this is one that we would use for our MXBE series. It's a 14-pole uh, PMG with three-phase output, and most uh, U.S. applications are operating at 1,800 RPM, so we'll look down there. So you're going to see a 264-volt, 210 hertz output that's around 1 kW, and so that's what's going to be pushed into the AVR to power this system. So for PMG excitation, it's very similar to the auxiliary wound, where you have the AVR feeding the exciter stator and sensing the voltage that's coming out of the main stator. But the only difference is the PMG is what's going to be feeding the AVR. So any dips you see from the current is not going to affect the feeding of the AVR. So it's a much cleaner signal, much cleaner voltage. And here's another example of where we're going to see the three phase and the single phase AC and DC currents, where you're having the AVR feed the DC current into the exciter stator, inducing it into the main rotor. So for Morelli, our PMGs are a pretty easy install for our smaller units. We use a very modular design for our alternators, which allows you to retrofit a PMG kit to any of your existing units. So if we look here at uh, the breakdown of our PMG kit, it's just a few parts that we're going to bolt on to the end of the alternator. This picture on the right here is going to be what it looks like once it's uh, installed. So to install one of our PMG kits, uh, all we're going to have to do is remove the non-drive-in shield of the generator, which is just held on with a few bolts and install the PMG onto the rotor shaft end where there's slots already installed on their shaft end for the PMG. From that point, after we've installed the exciter rotor, 
we're going to slide the PMG stator over the rotor and secure it to the alternator frame. From this point, we're going to run the wires from the PMG into the terminal box where we're going to connect them to the ABR. And then we just have to reinstall the non drive in shield of the generator just to clean it up a little bit. I would like to thank you for attending today's webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, like I said, we'll be hanging out around for a few more minutes, answering them in the uh, in the Q and A window. Uh, please attend our next one. We're going to be talking about machines for use in marine applications. Thank you very much.